Canine Cushing's disease is probably the most common endocrine disorder that we see in, in geriatric dogs. Um, it's estimated that 90 to 100,000 new dogs are diagnosed every year. We're not 100% sure of the underlying cause. Um, in humans, it's almost always due to a genetic mutation that predisposes them to pituitary tumors. In the dog, while people have looked for these mutations, we really haven't found them in the dog. So many people think that it's actually a disorder of neuroregulation. It's a neurodegenerative disease affecting aged dogs, which results in areas of ACTH hyperplasia within the pituitary that then ultimately result in a clonal expansion of one of those cells and the development of a tumor. There are some recent things that are coming out with respect to treatment options. Historically, we've used medications that attack the adrenal. Uh, we don't address the primary problem, which is the pituitary tumor. So a lot of the drugs that we use, like lysadrine, which is an adrenolytic agent, or trilostane, which is an adrenal enzyme blocker, work to lower cortisol levels, and that helps with clinical signs. But neither of these treatments really works at the level of the pituitary. So recently, investigators have come out with a couple of treatment options. Uh, one is the use of dopaminergic drugs. About 30 to 40 percent of these tumors in dogs uh, overexpress the D2 dopamine receptor, and drugs that bind with high affinity to the dopaminergic receptor not only decrease ACTH production, which then lowers cortisol, but they actually shrink the tumors. And there is a drug commercially available called cabergoline that was used in a large number of dogs in a study out of Argentina. And again, the drugs seem quite effective in normalizing uh, clinical signs as well as shrinking the tumors, at least in dogs with relatively small tumors. The other thing that are being looked at are what other receptor abnormalities are expressed in these tumors. Uh, our group found that many of these dogs overexpress the EGFR receptor, and that ligands for the EGFR receptor, when used in cell culture of these tumors, actually gets the tumors to shrink and decreases ACTH production. So we're getting ready to embark on a clinical trial looking at EGFR receptor antagonists, as well as looking at somatostatin receptor antagonists. Somatostatin is a normal hormone within the pituitary that serves to inhibit the release of other hormones. It's been found that when we take these tumors out of dogs, they overexpress the SST2 receptor. And if we can come up with a ligand that binds to that receptor, we can get the tumors to shrink. And there is a drug now that was recently approved for use in people called posiriotide. And posiriotide is a SST2 receptor antagonist that binds with high affinity. A recent study in dogs with fairly small tumors showed that not only did they get reductions in ACTH and reductions in urine cortisol to creatinine ratios, but also modest shrinkage in some of these tumors. So a larger study now uh, we'll be undertaking is to look at the use of these drugs like posiriotide uh, in treating dogs with pituitary macroadenomas, uh, large tumors that uh, ultimately cause death due to a mass effect. We want to see can we shrink these tumors uh, without radiation and without surgery. So hopefully some of these newer treatments um, that have recently become available for humans will become available for use in the dog.